begin to push up against you. And instead of just pushing them back by engaging with them, just let them float in and out with the breath. Breathing in here, breathing out. If you find that you have to return to the attention of your breath several times, that's okay. Mindful breaths here, staying right where you are, breathing in and breathing out. And then just soft softening your focus. this whole sheltering in started. Our whole life shifted. Some people called it a new normal. For me, I resisted it. It was new. It was nothing normal for me. Maybe you share the same viewpoint. Some of us became teachers. Some of us became care providers for parents, for friends. Some of us had to shift their work to home and incorporate all of that teaching and care providing. And for me, I felt like I was climbing, going through this military obstacle course almost, climbing this wall, climbing this wall, and just when I thought I reached the top of the wall, um, I discovered the wall was a little higher than what I had anticipated. Um, sometimes I came across some barbed wire across the top of the wall, and some walls I actually climbed over, managed to climb over, and then landed in this big, huge mud pile or swamp. And I'm sure for all of us, at some point, it was daunting. Um, there were, yes, moments of tears for me, and sometimes thinking, I just can't do this. I'm just, I just can't do this. And now that we are letting a little bit of light, a little bit of more activity, maybe a little more socializing going on in our lives, we begin to recognize the fragility of life, but also the spirit of being a warrior. We've made it through so far. We've made it through whatever obstacle has been thrown at us, whatever detour construction has been on that obstacle course for you. So my quote today is very simple, and it comes from Nelson Mandela. 
And the quote is, it always seems impossible until it's done. And when I reflect back on that through all of this, yes, I thought that there were impossible days to get through. And I'm sure you perhaps felt the same way or had moments like that. But think about all the times in your life, and I think about the times in my life where I have said to myself, I just don't know I can do this, this is gonna be impossible, and yet here we are. So with that in mind, that spirit of a warrior, because you have made it through, bring the palms together at the heart, and then with this just sense of gratitude for having that spirit of a warrior and making it this far, with your palms on your heart, just take a moment to feel the beat of your heart, the lift and fall of your chest with the breath. Yeah, we're here. It may seem impossible until it's done. Yes, we have a spirit of a warrior. That spirit of warrior, the fragility of our life, powering through a lot of things, but also finding the softness in it all. So take a moment here to set any sort of personal intention or offering for your practice. And I really encourage you today to maybe even dedicate your practice to you. Yeah, congratulate yourself for being here. With your next exhalation, release the arms out to the side, bend the knees, walk the feet wide, and then add some movement back into your body by shifting the knees from side to side here. Holding on one side if that feels right for you. And if you want to take the arms overhead or out to the side, that's fine too. over to the right. Roll all the way over onto your right side. And then use your arm strength to lift you up. Remove yourself, remove all the props that you have supporting you. And then find your way onto your back once again. And then once you're there, hug both knees in, give yourself a squeeze. Arms can go around the shins or underneath the knees, whatever's comfortable for you. Add a little rock, massage the lower back here. And then coming back to center, Begin some knee circles in one direction. And you can do this a couple of ways, moving both knees in the same direction or separating the knees, moving them in opposite directions. And maybe you want to play with both. And then reverse the direction of the circle. And then plant both feet on the mat. Take a nice big inhale here. Float those arms up overhead. Try and reach behind you. Grow long through the side body. And then when you're ready for your exhale, bring them down, bring the arms down by the side. 
Go ahead and do that a couple more times. Inhale, breathe way beyond the fingertips. Take the breath all the way out. Exhale, lower down. One more time here. Inhale up. And then exhale, hug those knees in, wrap your arms around your shins. Once again, give yourself a nice squeeze. And then we'll plant that left foot to the mat. The knee can stay bent or extend the leg long, whatever you're most comfortable with. Hug the right knee in, and then just take it in and out, maybe widening those circles just a little bit. If there's any place that speaks to you that you want to hold, getting out any sort of kinks, reversing the circle, playing with it a little bit. And then coming back to center, extend that right leg all the way up toward the sky. Interlace your fingertips behind your thigh here. Point and flex those toes. Maybe even separating the toes a little bit. Circle the ankle. And then with the rhythm of your breath, bend and straighten the knee. Inhale, extend, press through the heel. So we'll activate those toes back toward the shin. And then bend the knee. And then the next time that right leg reaches up, again, activate that leg, curl the toes back, tiptoe those fingertips up the back of the leg, lifting your head and your shoulders as you draw that leg towards you. Press through the heel. You feel a nice long stretch in the back of the leg here. But take it just to a place that's comfortable. So you should feel the stretch, but no pain. On an exhale, slowly lower your head and shoulders back. Inhale here. Exhale, let the heel lead the way. Exhale, lower the leg down about halfway. Pause for the inhale. Lower and hover. Inhale, rise all the way back up. Exhale, lower down about halfway. Pause for the in-breath, lower and hover. Go ahead and do that a few more times with the rhythm of your breath. Heel leading the way here. And then the next time that leg is lifted, hug the knee in once again. Give yourself a nice squeeze. And extend that right leg long. So now you're going to notice that the right side's probably feeling a little longer, a little more open than the left. So we'll even that out. Right leg can stay long or knee bent, whatever works for you. Hug the left knee in. And then just begin to deepen those circles on this side, holding where you need to hold. Reversing the circle when you're ready. Taking it just to all the right places. So now I think of like my first yoga class and how impossible that seemed, right? Like I'll never be able to touch my toes. That's impossible. Everything is impossible until it's done. So hug that left knee in, and then extend the leg up toward the sky. Interlace your fingertips behind the back of the leg. Point and flex those toes. Maybe circle the ankle. Wiggle the toes a little bit. And then press through that heel. Activate that leg and then tiptoe the fingertips up the back of the leg. Drawing that knee in. Inhale here. Good. Exhale. Release the head and shoulders. Bend and straighten the knee with the rhythm of your breath. Next time that foot is pressing up toward the sky, curl those toes back towards your shins. Take an inhale 
up here. Exhale, lower down about halfway. Pause for the in-breath. Lower and hover. Inhale, leg lifts. Exhale, lower down about halfway. Take an inhale here, lower and hover. Go ahead and do that a few more times. Letting your breath pave the way. Next time that left leg is lifted, bend the knee, squeeze it in. And bring the right knee in to meet it. Give yourself one big squeeze here. And then option to roll over to one side or rock yourself up. So you're going to need to sit on a blanket or something to maintain that natural curve in your lower back, and make sure you bring a block along. So from here, this is staff pose, Dandasana. We, we do this um, several times in a yoga class, sometimes lifting halfway up while we're standing on our feet. But it's a pose that's usually moved through quickly, so we're going to spend a little bit of time on it today. So with here with the toes pointed up toward the sky, toes are activated back so like you're standing on the wall here. Take an inhale here, float the fingertips up overhead. So you're nice long side body, the breath is going to be way beyond the fingertips here. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower down. So the legs are nice and engaged here, arms are engaged too. Inhale, lower up. Up, raise up, lower up, inhale, raise up, exhale, lower down. Yeah, lower, lower up, I wonder how you do that. Take your block, you're going to the widest part of the block, you're going to hold it in between your palms. Draw the shoulders back, super important here to keep those shoulders nice and activated. Press the palms into the block here, nice long spine, and then squeezing into the block, we're going to fire up the shoulders now, so inhale, Lift up. Still squeezing into the block. The shoulder blades slide around the back of the heart. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Good. One more time. Inhale up. Then we're going to hold. Hold the pose, not the breath. So palms are pressing into the block. Maybe you feel a little bit of core work here. Toes are curled back toward the shins. Yeah, staff pose never felt like this before, right? So crown of the head is reaching up toward the block. One more breath. Beautiful. Exhale, lower all the way down. Good. Bring your blocks to the front of the mat now and work your way to a tabletop. Take your time. Pad your knees if you have to. So for some tender knees, a thin mat. And then once you get to tabletop, just begin to breathe through a few cat-cows. Adding any additional movement that feels good. So you want to figure out the hips here. Feet can be flat on the mat or toes curled. Maybe bend the elbows a little bit. And then when you take your next out breath, let the big toes kiss. Hips go back toward the heels, child's pose. So coming back to that intention that you set at the beginning of your practice. Maybe you dedicated your practice to you. Everything is impossible until it's done, right? And I know that we'll all look back on this saying, I wonder how we made that through that. But somehow we did. Spirit of a warrior. Take one more mindful breath here. And then use your next inhale to rise all the way back up. Walk those palms back underneath your shoulders if you've lost that. Knees underneath the hips. 
on an inhale, send your right leg long behind you. So we're going to press through that heel once again, that same action we were doing in staff pose just a moment ago as the toes curl back. Exhale, find that cat back, draw the knee in toward the nose. Inhale, extend. A couple of times here. And then the next time that right leg is pushing back, again, you're standing on that back wall. Find a little balance by reaching the left fingertips forward. So we're nice, one nice long line here from the heel all the way out to the fingertips. So we're balancing that delicate life we have with the strength that we have, the balance between the fragility and strength. Everything is impossible until it's done, right? One more breath. Release that left palm to the mat. Inhale, draw, uh, take an inhale here. Exhale, draw that knee in. And then step it up between your blocks. Take a moment here to bend and straighten the knee. Take it a little deeper. You can walk those blocks to the outside of that front leg and really feel the stretch there. One more breath. Walk those blocks back to frame your front foot. Good bend, the front knee, step back to tabletop, shake it out. back to tabletop. Inhale, extend the left leg long. So we're going to press through that heel once again like we're standing on that back wall. Toes curl back. Exhale. This time draw the knee in. Round the spine. Move through a couple of times here. The next time that left leg is long, hold here. Challenge our balance here by sending the right fingertips forward. So again, a nice long line from the heel out through the fingertips. The head is an extension of the spine. Holding the pose, not the breath. Good. Release that right palm down. Step that left foot up between your palms. And with the rhythm of your breath, bend and straighten the knee here. Next time that leg is straight, peel those toes up off the mat, energetically drawing that foot back toward you. Maybe melt your heart a little forward. And if you want to take it a little deeper, walk those blocks to the outside of your extended leg. Frame your front foot, bend the knee, sit back to tabletop, go ahead and shake it out. If you want to push up and back to a down dog, that's great too, pedaling out the heels. Personalize your practice in any way here. And then gently exhale the knees if you're in a down dog. And then let's take a quick rest in child's pose. 
So bring the hips back toward the heels once again. Quiet the mind, quiet the breath. Remind yourself of that intention. Even warriors, take a rest. your next in breath to rise all the way back up. Find that tabletop once again. On an inhale, you're going to send your right leg long behind you as you press through the heel. Exhale, round the spine, draw the knee to the nose, step that foot up between your palms. And then slowly walk your palms up your front foot. Bring the palms to the thigh. And then with the help of the palms, you're going to bend that knee and then just gently lift your heart up a little bit more. So the spine's going to straighten just a bit. The shoulders are going to drop away from the ears. You're going to open up your heart. You a nice, proud heart here. And then take one of those blocks, once again at the wide part, bring it between your palms, pressing into the palms, and send that block out in front of you. With your next breath, you're going to take that block up overhead, so that same action we were doing in Dandasana. And then slowly release the block back down. Keep the bend in the front knee here, so the heart's going to stay lifted. It's so easy for us to go forward. So keep that heart lifted, keep the shoulders engaged here. And then the next time that block is overhead, find a place to hold. So shoulders are hugging the back of the heart, front knee is bent, nice proud heart, breathing. And then when you release your breath, slowly release all the way down. Step that foot back to tabletop, go ahead and shake it out. And once again, if you need to lift up into down dog at any time, another option is to extend the right leg behind you, bring the toes to the mat, and just kind of release that leg a little bit. And then bring yourself back to tabletop. We'll shift to the other side. So stay present here. Notice you're anticipating the next step. Pause here for a full breath in and a full breath out. And then inhale, extend that left leg now behind you. Press through the heel. Make sure you're not lifting that left hip up so the hips are square to the mat. Exhale, knee to nose. Step that foot up between your palms. Walk the palms up the front leg and then gently press into your thigh. So the heart shifts back over the hips. Nice, proud heart. Shoulders are soft. Just take a moment to breathe into that stretch a little bit into the right side. And then take your block, bringing the blocks in between the palms. Lift it in front of you right about heart level. Pressing into the block, inhale, lift those arms up overhead, exhale down. Go ahead and do that a couple of more times here. And then the next time that block is overhead, we'll hold here, so you're squeezing into the block, keep the bend in the front knee, And then exhale, slowly lower all the way down. Go ahead and shake it out in any way. And we'll take another rest in 
child's pose. Take your time getting there. We have to do the impossible things at our own pace sometimes, right? you're ready, slowly bring yourself back to a tabletop pose. A couple of options here. You can lift up and back to down dog. If down dog is just not going to work for you today, walk your palms back towards your knees, curl your toes, and then lift your hips up and back so you're in a forward fold. If you're in down dog, walk your feet up towards your palms. So now we're all into a forward fold. Feet hip width distance apart, a good gauge or two fists in between the feet. Slide those palms up to your shins. Inhale, lift up halfway. So here we are in staff pose, Dandasana once again. It's Ardha Uttanasana. So crown of the head is reaching toward the front of your mat. Exhale, bow. Bow into that spirit of your warrior. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, bow once again. Good. One more time. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, slowly release. Walk your feet wide this time. Keep a gentle bend into the knees. Grab opposite elbows. And then just let your head and your shoulders kind of dangle. Maybe shake your head. No, or nod your head. Yes. to the hips, heel toe your feet back about hip width distance, and then you use your breath to slowly rise all the way up. A couple shoulder rolls forward, a couple shoulder rolls back. Feet hip width distance apart, anchor through all four corners of your feet. Nice proud heart as those shoulder blades hug the back of the heart, turn the palms open. A little subtle tuck of the chin to draw the back of the neck here. Take a generous breath in. Yeah, feel your strength in spite of all the fragility, all the effort, all that negative talk that we've been experiencing about our weaknesses. I can't do this. It's impossible. Everything is impossible until it's done. So just take a moment here to feel gratitude for your strength. Yeah, you're here. You've come this far. You've made it through everything that's been thrown at you. The high walls, the muddy waters. And then gently blink your eyes open. So you're going to grab a block now. And once again, you're going to come to a standing position about hip width distance apart. Again, a good gauge or two fists in between the hips. So we're going to take a block in one hand, and we're going to hold that block. Once we get down, we're going to hold that block like we were doing in between our palms at the widest part. So if you want to just leave it on the ground, that's fine too. Take an inhale here, and then on an exhale, you're going to slowly lower at the waist. You're going to find that block and then you're going to bring that block up over your head. Inhale here. So reach, reach, reach through the fingertips. And then exhale, a gentle bend in the knees, tuck chin to chest. It's a little bit different here. Inhale, lift up. Nice long spine, crown of the head. So the gaze is going to be toward the mat. So it's that same Dandasana pose we were doing before, only just a different orientation. Exhale, lower down. Squeezing into that block here. 
Firing up the shoulders. Good. One more time. Inhale, lift up. So hold here for a couple of breaths. Squeeze into that block. Reach the fingertips forward. One more breath. Exhale, slowly lower down. Set the blocks to the side. Walk the feet wide. And then just kind of hang out and ragdoll here. Maybe shifting the hips from side to side. And then heel toe the feet back to hip width distance, hands to the hips. Inhale, rise all the way back up. So we're going to put all of that together. So take your two blocks, place them at the front of your mat here. You may want to pick the highest um, height this time. For me, I have short arms, so I have to pick the high height. And then we're going to tap into that warrior of ours. So walk up towards your block, feet about hip width distance apart once again. Take an inhale here. Yeah, let's come back to that mountain pose. Grounding ourselves down through our feet. Yes, we can do this. We can do the impossible. And then blink the eyes open. Inhale, float the palms up overhead. As you exhale, fold at the waist. Bring both palms now to each of the block, one palm on each block here. Nice long spine back to that nice flat back, crown of the head reaching forward. And then anchoring through your left foot. So that left leg is going to be nice and strong. Inhale the right leg up. Toes curl back towards you. And level out the hips so they're level to the mat. So warrior three here. Yes, yeah, spirit of this warrior. You can stay here. Want to take it a little deeper? You can begin to lift one palm to your heart. Lots of options here, bringing both palms to the heart or taking it into full warrior three by taking the palms up overhead. Balance is obviously not with me today, so I'm going to keep my hands on my blocks. Maybe experiment lifting one hand up and then the other. And then a gentle bend in that standing leg. Bring the right foot down to meet the left. Go ahead and shake it out. Maybe heel toe the feet wide for a couple of breaths before we move to the other side. And then heel toe the feet back to center. Palms to the block, nice flat back, crown of the head reaching toward the front of the room. Anchor through that right foot this time. And then when you're ready, send the left foot behind you. So take it in baby steps, press through the heel, that'll help with the balance. And then play with it. Palms to the heart, palms out over your head. When you find your pose, hold the pose, not the breath. Easy to do in a balanced pose, just to hold the breath. And then bring both palms back to the block, a gentle bend in that standing leg. Drop that foot down so they're together. Heel toe the feet wide. Go ahead and shake it out here. And then moving the blocks to the side. Option to walk yourself back to a down dog. Or roll over onto your hands and knees to a tabletop. If you're in down dog, drop the knees so we're all in the tabletop. And then come back to your child's pose. breaths 
us here in child's pose. And slowly begin to slide the palms back towards you. Shift your hips to one side. Go ahead and find that blanket again to sit up on. To keep that natural curve in your spine and grab your strength. So extend both legs long, coming back to that staff pose. So the spine is nice and long. Strap goes around the sole of your feet, both feet. Activate those legs so the toes curl back towards you. Take an inhale here. And then keeping the spine nice and long, the heart's going to lead the way, right? Our spirit of our warrior. Take an inhale here, and then on your exhale, you're slowly going to begin to lower down. You may want to pause a little bit. Inhale, lengthen a little bit more. And then exhale, lower just a bit more. Taking it just to a place that's comfortable for you. You still want that effort. We're still climbing walls here. Yeah, we got to get over all of this. But we also want to be compassionate and gentle. We want that spirit of the warrior, but we also want to balance it out with the softness. I'm going to take a couple of more breaths here. Slowly begin to rise all the way up. Yeah, set the strap to the side. Remove yourself from any sort of props that you're sitting on. Center yourself on your mat here. And then using your core, slowly finding your way all the way down. So curl those toes back toward us once again. Activate those legs. Once you get all the way there, inhale, float those fingertips up overhead. And then on your exhale, bring the knees in, give yourself a nice squeeze. Hmm. Drop the feet to the mat. Walk the feet wide, and then release those knees over to the right. After a few breaths, if you want to add on by taking that right foot to the top leg, left fingertips can reach overhead, maybe even turning your gaze over to the left. Breathing in and out of the nose. And slowly begin to release that arm to the side. Bring the knees back to center. Shift them from side to side for a few breaths until you eventually surrender to the left. Stay here for a couple of breaths and then decide if you want to add on by bringing that left foot to the top leg and reaching those right fingertips up overhead. Exhale, release that arm down to the side, and cry. 
across the legs, windshield wiper the knees from side to side. And then gently draw the knees in once again, giving yourself a nice hug. And then gathering up any sort of layers or props that you want to use to support you during your final resting pose. So you can come back to that posture that we used when um, we opened the class. Or you can just simply place one of the blankets under your head. I'm going to take the second blanket and roll it up and place it underneath my knees. Just give my knees a little bit of a rest today. Work your way onto your back. Bring one palm to the belly, one to the heart. Let the eyes close as the gaze shifts down to the heart behind your closed lids. And just settling into that spirit of your warrior, the strength of all those walls that you've climbed, honoring with the softness of our life. Finding that balance between effort and ease. And maybe even turning the corners of the lips up, acknowledging that, yeah, how many times in my life have I said, man, it's impossible, I'll never be able to do that. And look, here we are, right? Settle into this stillness for a few minutes. keeping your eyes closed, bringing your awareness to your breath once again, following the breath in and out, catching into that rhythm, let your head float from side to side. Begin to wiggle fingers and toes, maybe stretching the fingertips up overhead once again, taking a nice big stretch. And then hug both knees in and work your way over to the right side. Use your arm strength to lift you up. Coming back to a comfortable seat. Join the palms together in front of your heart. On an exhale, drop chin to chest as you bow into your hands, your heart, and your internal light. Let's 
spirit of warrior, everything's impossible until it's done. Yeah, so you've got this. Recall your intention, charge it up with your breath, and use your exhale to gently release it out to the universe. And it's been my honor to guide you through your practice today, sending blessings to you and to all who cross our paths. Thank you so much from my heart to yours. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me. See you next time on the